Can the Lions pull this off on Sunday? Can they do it and get on the road and win in Dallas? Let's talk about it. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Locked On Lions, a Friday edition on the Locked On Podcast Network. Matt Derry with you on this a Friday, October 21st into Saturday, October 22nd. Both Michigan and Michigan State off on Saturday on a bye. So Lions take center stage on Sunday as they head to Dallas. Tracy Wolfson, the pride of the Michigan Wolverines. Jim Nance, Tony Romo, the number one CBS team on the call for Detroit at Dallas at 1 o'clock Sunday afternoon. Let's discuss it and get into it right here on Locked On Lions today. Thanks for making us your first listen. Following us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks and at Locked On Lions on Twitter, the Matt Dairy Facebook fan page. And as always, we are with you on YouTube, the Locked On Lions YouTube channel. Thank you for subscribing and checking us out here. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, coming up on the show today, Lions special teams coach Dave Phipp said, we're blowing some things out of proportion with the team having 10 kickers in the last two years. We'll read you that quote coming up. Also, Dan Campbell spoke today about the team's record. Do you agree or disagree with what he has to say? We'll tell you what he said. Injuries of note. Players back at practice of note. We'll get into that. The Lions may be moving Aiden Hutchinson to linebacker? And a couple of keys to the game, in my estimation, for Sunday in Dallas against the Cowboys. But uh, thanks again for watching and listening. All right, I'm actually semi-intrigued by this game this weekend. Let let me start and say something about Sunday. If you missed Marcus Mosier from Lockdown Cowboys on the crossover yesterday, please check that out. Uh, We said I said on on the predictions at the end of the show yesterday, Dallas 26, Detroit 23. I think the Cowboys will win, but I just have this sneaking feeling. I just think the Lions are going to play better. I think the Lions are going to start better. I think Detroit is is going to pick it up a little bit on Sunday. Um, they've They've had a couple of weeks to prepare for this game, right? I mean, here they are, uh, off a bye week, feeling good, healthy. Feeling better. Dallas is off of a pretty tough loss last week in Philadelphia, where quite honestly, I'm not saying that was their Super Bowl, but that was a huge game for them. And for them to come home and look at their schedule and go, all right, we got the Lions and the Bears back-to-back at home. They're probably exhaling a little bit. I think the Lions can catch them a little bit off guard. Dallas' defense is really good. They're third in the league in scoring defense. They're only giving up like 16 points per game. The Lions are giving up like 34 points a game. Let me get the exact number here so I don't sound like an idiot. The Lions are giving up, yeah, 34 points per game. Dallas is giving up 16. But why is the spread only seven? Hmm. Shouldn't Dallas be a double-digit favorite in this game? Cowboys are four and two, and they're good. And they're getting Dak Prescott back. I think Dak's going to be a little rusty. I think the Lions can go in there and be really competitive. Let's see what the coaching staff is made of. You've had two weeks to prepare. Dallas had to play Sunday night last week. So I think this game's going to be closer than folks think. I'm going to give you some keys to the game um, coming up in a second. Health-wise, sounds like DeAndre Swift is making strides each and every day. He's practicing more. That's good news. I'm recording this at 1.30, so it'll be before the, the, the injury report comes out later today. Um, also, Amon Ross St. Brown is as close to 100% with that ankle injury that he's been in weeks. So you get St. Brown and Swift back. Those are good signs for this offense, and they're going to need to put some points up. And they're going to need to block the likes of Demarcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons, who are just monsters, part of a Dallas defense, which is number one in the league, in sacks. Concerns about the injury start with Charles Harris. 
he has not practiced all week and didn't play in the last game, and this is that's not good. The Lions are very thin up front on the defensive line. They gave Charles Harris an $8 million a year contract this offseason after a great year last year. Well, great in Lions standards. A pretty good year last year. And so not having Charles Harris is definitely going to hurt. Someone's going to have to step up, whether it's Austin Bryant, Julian O'Quara, whomever, on the other side of Aiden Hutchinson. Also, as uh, Eric Schlitt pointed out on Wednesday's show, DJ Chark is still hobbling. He hasn't practiced all week. And Eric was concerned that he could be put on the injured list. Those are two pretty big, prominent names that haven't really practiced all week and you would figure would be downgraded to out or doubtful for Sunday's game in Dallas against the Cowboys. And look, I'm well aware of the history between these two teams. I'm well aware of the 2014 playoff game with Pete Morelli. I just, you know, I don't view Dallas as, oh my gosh, loud stadium, tough place to win. Go back years ago and Stafford and Calvin Johnson lit them up. And I've been to, to to Jerry World, all right? Place is humongous. It's a great stadium. It's, it's, I don't view that as like going to Lambeau, all right? You got a fast track, uh, turf. I, I think the Lions can play with Dallas this week. Am I crazy to think this? I don't think they're going to go in there and get blown out. I think two weeks ago against New England was a terrible performance, and the team played poorly. But I think with a... a, 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 a some adjustments to the practice schedule, to the coaching staff kind of feeling a little bit under fire, to Dallas having to play a very emotional game last Sunday in Philly. I I like Detroit's chances. I'm not predicting the upset per se, but I think the Lions are going to be right there. I do. It could come down to a Michael Badgley or Sam Ficken kick, and I'm going to get to the special teams and the kicking situation in a second. I think this game is going to be closer than people think. So I guess I'm telling you to take the seven points, whatever. That's just, that's just me. Uh, what about our friends at Simply Safe? All right. Here are three of my favorite things, right? Football, football, and saving money. So let's talk about saving big money right now with Simply Safe Home Security. They're offering Locked On Lions listeners 40% off their advanced security system. 40% off. Simply Safe was just named the best home security of 2020 by US News. They love it. I love it. You'll love it because it's Simply Safe. Your safety is the only thing that matters. All right. Simply Safe works. All right. My neighbors are the first ones that I knew that had this system. And they, they feel so secure at home because there were times when they were concerned about noises in the house, whatever else. But Simply Safe professionals have your back. Whether it was a 24 7 monitoring agent or Simply Safe tech support staff all right with 24 7 professional monitoring when a threat is detected simply safes monitoring professionals promptly contact you and dispatch uh, dispatch first responders to your house even if you're away or unable to respond and the costs are like under a dollar a day don't miss this chance to save big when you protect your home with the best get 40 percent off your order when you visit simplysafecom slash locked on nfl today customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes. That's simplysafe.com slash lockdown NFL. Go today. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Special teams coordinator Dave Phipp uh, spoke today and, uh, or yesterday, I should say. And I have been one that have, has been very critical of Bradley, Brad Holmes, the Lions general manager, for how this team's kicking situation has gone down the last two years. Number one, when Holmes came in, the Lions did have an opportunity to re-sign Matt Prater. And sources told me two years ago that Prater was willing to stay. The Lions only offered him a two-year deal. Cardinals, or the Lions only offered him a one-year deal. Cardinals offered him two years at around the same money. money. His wife's from Arizona, I believe, and he ended up going to Arizona. And the Lions since then have trotted out the likes of uh, Randy Bullock, Matthew Wright, Aldrick Rosas, Ryan Santoso, Austin Seibert, uh, 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 Dominic, what's his nuts? Um, um, oh, hold on. See, I, I want to get this right. Michael Badgley, Sam Ficken, Dominic Eber- Eberly. They brought Seibert back. Um, it's been a mess. And, and for two years now, this team has been 
trying to find a kicker. And currently, today, as we're talking, Money Badger, Michael Badgley, ex of the Colts and Bears and stuff, and Sam Ficken, who was run out of town by the Jets years ago, ex of Northwestern, they're battling it out for the place-kicking situation. All right? Uh, did I mention Riley Patterson from last year? Patterson and Seibert fought it out in training camp. Seibert beat him out. Seibert missed the big kick, uh, kicks, plural, in Minnesota this year. Then he was injured. Then he, they let him go. Then they brought in Badgley. Campbell refused to use him in the New England game. Now Ficken's here, and we won't know until probably Sunday morning which kicker is going to kick for this team. Special teams coach Dave Phipp said yesterday, I'm going to read this quote to you because I think it's ridiculous. Uh, but I think overall, quote, from our decision-making process on kickers and all that, I don't regret or second-guess any of the moves we've made up to this point. And in hindsight, you would do some things differently maybe, but we obviously don't have the benefit of all the information. So anyway, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully it'll settle down here. It's a good question, and I totally get it. I think saying that there's been 10 kickers in here makes it sound worse than it is. I mean, we've had a couple different kickers. We had really two primarily last year, and hopefully we end up having two this year primarily, and it settles down, and we end up getting some productivity out of those guys, end quote. Sorry, Dave, you're full of it. Well, we really only had two last year, Seibert and um, um, Patterson. You started the exhibition season last year with Bullock and Wright. You had Rosas kicking in Cleveland. You had Santoso kicking in Pittsburgh. That was a huge missed kick in Pittsburgh in overtime last year because the Lions would have won the game. What do you mean we really only had two last year? No, 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 you didn't. What, the Pittsburgh game doesn't count? Well, we really only had two this year if it settles down primarily no no <laughs> wrong wrong dominic eberly or ellerby or whatever his name was eberly kicked in the seattle game and he was terrible so i, I you know the, this notion of well it, it looks worse than it is no it's bad it's not working. If Seibert is able to kick in Minnesota, the Lions win the game. If Santoso was able to kick in Pittsburgh last year, the Lions win that game, not tie it. Yeah, at the end of last season, Patterson did a nice job and helped them win. But the Lions elected not to bring Matt Prater back. And I know Matt Prater's 38. And I know he, he got offered longer terms in Arizona, but that's a decision this organization made. Your coach in a 6 nothing game two weeks ago in New England elected not to use his kicker and go for it on fourth and nine. So if, if Ficken's the guy the rest of the year instead of Badgley and Ficken's good, that doesn't excuse how they thought of Badgley affected the Patriot game. Let's say he used Badgley to kick a 49-yarder and Badgley made it. That's a different football game. That's 6-3 at the half as opposed to 13 nothing. I get that Dave Phipp is a company guy and he's a pretty good special teams coach, but no, this is a, uh, this is a big deal. The kicking game has been horrible for two years and it's affecting the head coach's decision-making and wins and losses. Period. So that's how I feel about that. I, I don't agree with what he's saying at all. All right, folks, you want to bet on the games this weekend? You want to look ahead to spreads and all the trends? Go to betonline.net, your number one source for betting football and the start of this basketball season. Yes, NBA is underway. Pistons play the Knicks tonight. Put some money down at Bet Online. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in 
on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf, is at Bet Online. Go to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. You heard me. All right, so Dan Campbell met the media here today on a, a Friday, and he said that this team's record should be better than it is, and that at 1-4, and four, there were games out there that they should have won, that he's like, we got to go get this game in Dallas. And this has been bandied about. This has highly been discussed, um, or been highly discussed, because this team has been off for a couple of weeks. You look at Detroit's record at 1-4, and four, and do you agree with Dan Campbell that the team is better than their record? Should they have beaten Seattle? Should they have beaten Minnesota? You can make an argument for it. This league is down. There are so many teams sitting at three and three that you would have thought at the start of the year, they're better than three and three. Green Bay, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay. All these teams sitting at three and three that you go, man, you know, I thought they would be better. Um, New England, three and three. Bengals three and three, Browns two and four. All right, Denver supposed to be better two and four. Uh, Green Bay, as I mentioned, three and three. Tampa Bay three and three. New Orleans. Plus, some people were picking New Orleans to be like Peter King had them as the number one NFC seed. They're two and five. The Niners, Rams, all th- both three and three. Those are mediocre records. Three and three means you are average. And yet here are the Lions at one and four. Should they be better than the record? Dan Campbell says yes, and he says they are. Now we got to see it. Now we got to see it. And one of the keys to winning this game on Sunday is the Lions' ability to run the football against the Cowboys. We know this. Dallas is very good against the pass. Trayvon Diggs always seems to find a way to pick off a pass. J. Ron Curse, as Marcus Mosier pointed out yesterday on the, on the crossover, is having a really good year at safety, the former Lion. But one thing the Cowboys are middle of the pack at is stopping the run. And Philadelphia was able to run the football on the Cowboys this past Sunday night. Lions have got to run the ball. And if they're running it well, keep running it. I don't want to see... Uh, Swift for eight, Williams for five, Swift for 10. Great. Next play might be play action, but I don't want to see Jared Goff throwing it into double coverage. If the success is there with the run, they got to stick with it and keep Dak Prescott, Pollard, Zeke, CD off the field. So number one, I want to see them run the football. Dallas' defense is excellent. Where they are not excellent is against the run. They're average. Number two, The Lions and their offensive line, Frank Ragnow, they've got to be pointing out where Micah Parsons is at all times. Um, I'm not that concerned about Parsons versus Sewell or even Parsons versus Decker. What I'm concerned about is when Parsons is lined up in the middle and he's looking to blitz or he's lined up on on the left end and then rushes around. Little stunt, little game as they play, as they call it. And all of a sudden, the, the Evan Brown or whomever in the middle doesn't know where he is. I'm more concerned when the rush is coming at Jared Goff up the gut as opposed to from the edges. Lions have got to find a way to just limit my, I don't want to, three or four sack game, a strip sack, which we've seen from Goff, uh, forced interception based off of a hit. You can't turn the ball over on the road. Can't do it. So those are two very big keys for me. One other thing I saw today, which I found interesting, I think it was uh, Kyle Meinke pointed it out today at practice, is that, or Kelvin Shepard, the Lions linebackers coach, Shep, um, told the media that Aiden Hutchinson has been working uh, a little bit in practice at linebacker as well. They're trying to find more places for him to play and give him better opportunities to succeed. Linebacker? This is the number two overall pick. You drafted him to be a stud end, rush end, and to get to the quarterback and to be disruptive. find it a little weird 
that he's working with the linebackers unless they're trying to scheme some different things and it's more of a outside linebacker and he's going to stand up more. I don't know. Um, but if he's too undersized to be a rush end and he's not going to be able to get to the quarterback, then you shouldn't have drafted him at number two. Working with the linebackers is interesting. I want to see what this scheme looks like Sunday if it's more of a hybrid and he's still rushing. If I see Aiden Hutchinson dropping back into coverage and Peyton Hendershot and the tight ends running past him, then what are we doing here? Then this team should have uh, uh, signed a linebacker in the offseason or had someone else to go with Malcolm Rodriguez. So we'll see. We'll see how they deploy Hutch on Sunday. All right. Don't forget. Thanks for making us your first listen. We'll have a post-game pod, likely audio only, on Sunday. Thanks for watching as well. Go Lions.